Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of June 21st, 2021. This week we have four topics and one of them I never thought I was going to be able to talk about, which is trust. Trust is finally here, the recreational exam from the FA for uh, recreational pilots. So we'll talk about this whole thing. If you haven't seen the video, I have another full video on this, but we'll talk about it. Uh, we have a drone analyst survey. We'll have David Benowitz with us talking to talk, uh, coming to talk about the, uh, the survey that he's creating. And we have a DJI update with two different things from DJI this week. And we have an industry update with a bunch of briefs from the industry. So let's get to it. And the first thing this week, I'm really excited to be talking about this. We've been on an embargo from the FA for the last three or four months now. Uh, we have been approved to be a trust provider, but even better, the FA finally released a trust exam, uh, which is the exam that you have to take as a recreational pilot uh, to meet one of the requirements that was in the uh, recreational regulation. So. Uh, like I said, we are a testing provider, so you can take the test with us. The best part about all this is that it is free, it is very fast, and you can't fail the exam. So you can go on this platform, trust.pilotinstitute.com. You can take the test, and within probably 10, 15 minutes, uh, you'll have the certificate of completion. You print it, and then that's it. You never have to do this again. Uh, there are four quizzes. I think it's 23 questions total. The quizzes are divided throughout the training. And then by the time you're done, like I said, you get your completion certificate and then you're good to go. So this is required for anyone who's going to be flying their drones under USC 44809. You're going to say, what the heck is USC 44809? Well, it's the regulation for recreational pilots. So that's what you're going to do. Anytime you fly for a recreational purposes, for fun, then you make sure that you have this completed. Uh, a few notes, a few Q&As. We've seen a lot of questions in the last uh, 24 or so hours. Uh, first one is make sure you keep your certificate in your records to prove that you actually did the training. Uh, this is what meets the requirement for 44809 for one of the bullet points. And there's nine of them total. Yes, this is required if you are a Part 107 certified pilot, but you want to fly recreationally. A lot of people don't, I, I never realized this, but a lot of people don't know that they can actually fly for recreational purposes as a Part 107 pilot. And, uh, and it's really up to you. Before you take off, you can decide which rules you want to follow. It's two different sets of rules, okay? It's USC 44809 and it's 14 CFR Part 107. You pick the rules that you want to choose. Obviously, if you pick Part 107, you need to be certified. But if you've got a certification, you can pick one or the other. Now, some people have asked me this week, why would I want to fly as a recreational pilot if I have a Part 107 certificate? And the answer is, I can't really find a good answer, quite frankly. There, there, there's not really a reason anymore. There is not a loophole, if you want. There is not really uh, anything in the recreational rules that make it easier, better than if you were in a Part 107. In the past, you actually had something. We had, uh, if you wanted to fly at night, you didn't need a waiver to do it under recreational flying if you flew in uh, uncontrolled airspace. This is not the case anymore. You can do the same thing under Part 107 now. So that's kind of a, a, mute, a moot point at this stage. So anyway, um, another Q&A. Yes, this is required if you fly your drone that is sub 250 grams, 0 0.55 pounds. So if you have a Mavic Mini, if you have any of the, the mini drones that are out there from other manufacturers, Yes, you don't have to register it for recreational purposes, but you do need to do the trust uh, exam in order to, uh, to, to meet the requirements, okay? And yes, a, a drone, I use the term drone, the FAA uses the term drone, but here what we're talking about is a model aircraft, a model helicopter, a multi-rotor, quadcopter, whatever you have. All of these are considered unmanned aircraft. All of these fall under 44809, therefore you need to do the trust. Again, this is a one-time thing, it's going to take 15 minutes of your time and then you're, you're done and you're all set. So very simple. There's no upper limit either. So if it's over 55 pounds, you also have to do that if you're flying for fun. It is valid forever. Uh, you download your certificate. Now this is something you got to be careful. Um, you're going to create an account on our platform on trust.pilotinstitute.com. And when you create that account, 
uh, you'll be able to come back if you don't finish the training on time. That's why we have you create an account. But at the very end, as soon as we issue the certificate, we delete your account. So uh, this is a requirement from the FA. We don't keep your, your information. Actually, the FA doesn't even get your information. All the FA gets is this, the, we call it the token number. That's at the bottom of your certificate. And that's what we send to the FA to tell them this was this is a token number that, that is used that is that was issued to an actual person. They don't know who it was. We don't know who it was for. If you call us and said, I missed my number, we don't have a record of it, so we can't help you. So um, so yeah, you have it. All right. And for the second story this week, we actually have a guest and our guest is David Benowitz. And if you're used to our Pixel Drone show, you've seen David before. He's with Drone Analyst and, uh, and they collect a lot of data. They do a lot of analysis about drones, like it says in their name. And, uh, and David, welcome on the show. Happy to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. I'm always kind of looking forward to speak with you. So, David, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about drone analysts? I know some people may not be familiar with what you do. What do you do? What do you bring to the industry? And I know you've been doing this for quite a while now. Yeah, so drone analysts is kind of one of the first independent research consultancy agencies in the drone sphere itself. Um, so started back in 2016, we've been doing annual surveys um, and other type of reporting and collecting data around the industry and really giving people some transparency around what is the true benchmark, the true growth, and the true trends in the industry. Um, you know, we've all seen hype that, you know, the market's supposed to be something above 100 billion US dollars by by this year, actually. And um, yeah, we've just been really providing a lot more realistic approach, realistic analysis to the real growth in the market, the real size of the market for different stakeholders in the industry. Outstanding. And then recently you posted a link to a survey, and this is what I wanted to talk to you about this week. Um, what are you trying to collect? I went through the survey, but I don't want to. I don't want to give all the information. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, so yeah, every year we put out a survey, which is really kind of a benchmark and really understands the market structure from you know what drones are being purchased to you know what is the health nature of the services service providers. You know, are people making money? Are they losing money? You know, where are they making money as well? To also business agency users which industries are growing the most, which you know trends do we see there in that market? And then lastly, what software services are people relying on to power their drone operations? Um, and so that's kind of the structure of the survey. We, we release this survey and, and we release kind of data and findings from the survey every year. Um, so it's the longest running data set when it comes down to these market trends that exist in the market that, that I know of or that, that is really out there today. Yeah, your participation in the survey will really help us better understand the market and those insights provided from people who respond to the survey will inform stakeholders, but will also be kind of shared public with a few different key you know, data points that we share every year related to hardware trends, related to hardware market share as well. Uh, but then even later this week, we're publishing some data related to, um, you know, how much money our service providers making to help inform, um, you know, people looking to enter the industry or even in the industry on what are some ways they can optimize and maximize their, their revenue. Um, so that's kind of what the survey is and kind of what comes out of the survey. Um, your specific participation uh, will not just provide and kind of, uh, you know, give access to, to some key insights from, from the data itself, but we also do have a drawing for two $400 uh, gift cards. Um, so that's kind of a nice way to reward people for, for submitting. What are some of the things that you found in surveys in the past? You said you've been collecting data in a while. What's some of the things that you've seen and looked at the data and said, oh, this is not what I was expecting? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great question. You know, for me, especially last year, we were really focusing on what are the security concerns around specifically Chinese-made drones and how that kind of relates to purchases. Um, you know, obviously, we see a lot of that in the media and the drone media. Um, but also in kind of the, the big media publications like New York Times is writing about it, Wall Street Journal is writing about it. Um, and it was really interesting to see that overall, you know, the average drone buyer is not impacted by these concerns. Um, but there is a, a pretty strong portion of the market, specifically in public safety and energy, that are, that are really impacted. Um, another thing that we found kind of and been tracking since the early days is just how much money our service provider is making. Um, you know, we were kind of the first ones in the early days to kind of say, look, the drone rush isn't 100% there, you need to be careful when you enter the market and just what is your value, what services are you providing, and making sure you have the right training as well to make sure that you can optimize um, your revenue potential and, and see that growth. So that, that's kind of some of the, the long term historical trends. Um, this year, we're really looking to see about the impacts of autonomy. Um, and that's something I'm really looking forward to. We've added a few questions related to that on the business side is, you know, 
are you buying drones because of their autonomous features? And then when you do have this type of autonomous functions, how is it changing your operations? Very interesting. It, it's funny you said the the revenue and and be careful when you get into this industry with expectations. I still see so many of or so many competitors out there that are selling uh, courses to tell people, well, you can make millions with drones or you can do this. And and I make a point to actually make a joke out of this and say, hey, I'm not going to give you this yeah. rosy picture of, of the industry where uh, you can make four, four, five, six hundred dollars an hour. That is not realistic. So uh, sure, you can. I'm sure down the road you probably can, but it's it's not something that's going to happen all the time. So uh, I'm glad you mentioned uh, something like this. Um, I want to go back and, and loop back to something you just said and something that we've talked about before in the Pixel Drone Show, which is uh, which was the, the, the government involvement and, and how those decisions are made from the people that buy drones. Uh, obviously, uh, we've talked about DJI, and I know you used to work with DJI. Um, the, the recent changes that we've seen in the news from DJI and getting some kind of a, a thumbs up with, hey, the data is actually not all as bad as, uh, as, as it seemed like it was a year ago. Uh, what have you been getting from that information? What's your take on that? Yeah, yeah. So when we first started tracking this last year, you know, when we were looking at the survey data, we're tracking impacts on behavior, not opinions or perspectives, you could say. So what we see so much in the media, when we actually look at actual impacts to purchasing decisions, you know, people aren't really moving in mass to new manufacturers. Um, I think this year we'll see a, a little bit of a shift in that direction to kind of moving into these new manufacturers. Um, but, you know, I just say that, you know, there hasn't been that much changes to kind of the rules and regulations out there. You know, we do have the American Security Drone Act that's on the table in, in the Senate and just kind of passed through committee. Um, and then, of course, we had the Pentagon memo that kind of exonerated DJI, kind of didn't because it's on two very specific um, product SKUs that are, are customized, you know, customized firmware, customized software for standard hardware. Um, so it shouldn't have too much of an impact on the overall industry trajectory. Awesome. Well, anything else that we missed? Uh, no, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, to hear kind of and see what the data kind of tells us this year. And, you know, thanks for having me on the show. And uh, thanks to everyone out there who goes through the survey and completes it. Yep. And we'll put a link down there so you guys can go take the survey. And, uh, and David, what we'll do is we'll bring you back when the survey, how long before we get the final results? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the survey will be out until kind of the, the middle or towards the end or latter half, half of July. Um, and then we'll publish the findings in uh, September, uh, kind of ending for the end of September. Yeah, outstanding. We'll bring you back in uh, around that time frame and we'll talk about the result and, and see if there is any surprises. So, David, thanks for your time. Story number three this week is DJI is in the news uh, for something pretty good, I think, this time. Uh, new firmware on the DJI smart controller that is not compatible for the Mini 2. I didn't think it was going to happen. I did not think that DJI was going to make the smart controller compatible with the Mini 2, and it happened. So I'm glad I was proven wrong in a sense. Uh, this is a good update. I actually like the smart controller. I think it's a, it's, it's a great tool because I can use it with pretty much all of the drones that we have in the office now, except one or two, I think. So uh, something that's really, uh, really helpful. Uh, something else from DJI, they are releasing the Mini SE. We talked about it uh, last week or two weeks ago, and this is the, the, the second edition of the Mini, and uh, the price tag came out $299. So for less than $300, you will be able to get this Mini drone that is highly capable. I mean, it's not the, the Mini 2, it's not the, the high-end the high end Mini. <laughs> I don't know if that's something. But uh, it's gonna be released on July 15th. Uh, video is 2.7K. It still has a Wi-Fi connection. I know last week I talked about the fact that it has the new controller. Uh, even though it has a new controller, it is not the new connection. So you still have Wi-Fi connection, which means that you still can go super far. But hey, for, for $299, you actually get a lot of drone. Uh, for, for what you get. So pretty cool. Uh, next thing is uh, some industry updates. Interdrone 2021 has sadly been canceled. Uh, I get an email telling me about all this and and the, the, the reasons given were basically that they were trying to regroup to do something else for the industry. And, um, and that COVID took a big hit on their business plan, I think. 
uh, I think it's it, it was coming up pretty quickly. Uh, not a whole lot of people were probably uh, signing up right away, so they needed to make a decision at one point. That's my guess. Again, I, I don't have any insider information on that. Um, another piece of news this week was Lance. Lance went out for three days, 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Now, this has a lot of people talking in the industry because, well, because a lot of people lost a lot of money uh, over these three days, especially small dr drone service providers because, well, because they couldn't get access to fly in the airspace. So Lens is a great thing, but when it's down, man, it is it is uh, a pain in the rear. And so uh, we have uh, we had three days of, of not being able to get Lens approval. FA came back, I think it was uh, today or this morning, uh, today being Wednesday when we record the show, and they said, okay, Lens is back up with no real explanation about what happened. So I know a lot of people are asking questions about what happened, what is the contingency in case this happens again, so that we're not stuck being able to, well, not get approval to fly in airspace and basically shutting down an entire industry uh, flying in controlled airspace. So uh, we'll have more information on this as soon as we get more, uh, hopefully very soon, and probably next week we'll be able to give you more. But uh, this is all I have. Like, comment, leave your whatever comment, your, uh, your information down here. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We're getting close to 20,000. So I'd like to get to 20,000 pretty soon. Uh, I think within a couple weeks, we should be at 20,000, which is a big deal, a big deal for me. I think uh, this is just a, a testament to uh, the service that we provide to you guys. And you guys keep coming back, leaving comments, interacting, and, uh, and I love it. And I know the entire team at Pilot Institute loves that. So uh, we have a news, a airplane news update as well. Uh, the, we talked about an airplane that was found at the bottom of a lake. There's an update this week. We talk about the 37, 737 MAX that's having a few issues. Uh, we have a gear collapse on the 787 from British Airways. Uh, doesn't look pretty, sadly. And then a information about the FAA finally reworking the NOTAM system. And boy, uh, this is this is about 20 years too late, if you ask me, uh, but I'll talk about this over there. And then we have a pilot shortage with American Airlines and they're struggling to find pilots. So if you're interested in any of these topics, head over to the Airplane channel. And, uh, and then this week, we're gonna have a really cool guest on Tuesday for the uh, Pixel Drone Show podcast. So make sure that you tune in. Uh, make sure you go back and watch the interview that we did with Randall from uh, the new CEO, of hotel and listen to me just dropping names like uh, like I'm friends with Randall but that was uh, that was a really cool uh, cool interview lots of really good information if you're trying to figure out what's going on with hotel this is a uh, this is a cool thing so uh, that's it I'll uh, see you guys next week and in the meantime fly safe.